Good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to Belong Long Weekend of Literatures. And I'm truly delighted to, to have Anna with me to moderate my first session, and that too, a book reading, which I think is the most fun part of any literature festival where you get to listen to the author himself or herself talk about their book and read some excerpts from the book. So I'll, I'll introduce the speaker first. So Ana Filomena Amaral is a Portuguese award-winning writer and an experienced translator in several languages, particularly German. She has published 13 novels in Portugal, Mexico, Brazil, and the USA. And her novel, Walt at Home, Those Who Cheated Death, won a prize from Los Angeles Book Review. She has participated in several literary festivals in Cape Verde, India, Brazil, Beijing, and she's the director of Word of Fire, a literary festival in Portugal. So she's going to read a, her, from her book, Walt at Home, Those Who Cheated Death. And that will be followed by a Q&A, uh, where I'll be asking her some questions, some amazing, interesting questions to know about her writing style and things like that. So without further ado, I, I would request Anna to uh, take it forward from here and maybe read the book. And I think she's going to read an amazing chapter, which I found the most interesting. So over to you, Anna, and thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, first, I would like to thank your invitation the, to the Belong team and also to the Portuguese Embassy and the Camões Institute. It's always an honor to be in India and a pleasure also, especially when I'm going to spread the words I write in my books. So I'll start then in English, if you prefer, uh, with uh, the last chapter of this book, Vaulted Home, Those Who Cheated Death. And this book is about uh, mankind creation. It's uh, the history of mankind. And this is the last chapter and it's called Day Seven. There was my concluded work. Now I could rest from the toils of creation. Sunday had arrived. There was still a lot to do, but time would help to fill the house of luck with smells, flavors, images, sounds, and all the touches and finish, finishing touches of being human. This would also be the house of the senses, awake to sensuality that words alone can't say but they are the last to do so, and of them, only they will remain in this house, their monument. Therefore, I manifest on the day of rest, the will to raise a new narrative, stone by stone, day by day, lack by lack. It was the new house of text and of the world felt and thought in the plurality of its significance, of its sense to be in mankind's meaning, the complete fulfillment of sensualism. I demand on the day of rest, the right to create a new sense that which will live from all the others and will constitute in its coverage, the ring of fire of the sensations in expansion that which will remove all distances and all mirrors toward the door of reason and which step by step will mount the stairs to the Genesis. I demand on the day of rest, the freedom to assume the difference in an indifference by all those who insist to deny it to me. In being the difference, I am not the superficial covering, the appearance, but the essence of creation because in me is built in permanent plasma, the future of pasts and forgotten presents. I accuse on the day of the rest, all those who stole my strength, my beauty, my life, condemning me to a procreation imposed for the common good, as though this duty was mine alone, possessor of the matrix that defined my gender and denied me the definition of being more than anything immortal in my humanity. I judge on the day of the rest, the thinking of two millenniums, the feeling of two millenniums that first ignored me, later followed me, next worshiped me. On the fourth, they burned me, on the others immortalized me, discriminated me, and finally sterilized me. 
Only the soul remain that which they say is immortal in a body torn apart, apart by the pain and by the tears of two millenniums, but which remade and assumed prepares itself for a glorious entrance on the house of the third. I condemn on the day of the rest, all the defendants to a millennium of repose for those who claim to have made so much history deserve it. And here I am assumed in a synthesis of, river, of reverie so that the last day does not resemble anything because it is unique in the inequality of nothing. You share the world as if it was something that belonged to you. You kept perhaps the best part of the imperialism that generate the germs of discord and greed and all in the name of progress and civilization. You took white men, your mission to the end and the money your Lord was your reward. You were happy in a Europe that closed its eyes to poverty and exploitation and only opened them when it was to your advantage. You built the house with a legality that made everything legitimate to which you gave its own oldest name, democracy. But you ran so quickly that you tripped on the constructions of glass and metal and everything broke in flying fragments of fever and greed that soon created its monster, the war. You placed your vain head inside the spiked helmet and you left for the front, meet with the honor god, but not before you had demand loyalty from us. You still looked for the belt, but history had rusted it. We did more than you asked. We cried for you and prepared for your return whilst we looked after the house and the children. And when the nation invented another duty for us, we fulfilled that also. Obedient, cooperative, we forgot the Belle Epoque, dressed in the white angel's robe and went to the hospitals the workers' overalls, and we want to the factories. Longingly, we substituted you and fought to maintain the new conquest, out from the walls of home, inside the walls of industry, we were joyful with that illusion of freedom. We felt the weight of the day to day without you, the penury, the misery, and the surveillance. We relearned the meaning of solitude, and assumed the place that had always been refused to us. From the trenches come the news of bayonets that pierce the flesh and drain the skull. From the trenches comes the smell of spilled blood and of insanities lived under the death of weapons more and more sophisticated. From the trenches come letters with the strange and suspected certainty that we were widows and our children orphans, and we cried, but we were cedars of courage. Once again at home, we, was, we assisted to the return of the moth and the night of the math. We already suffered at home from hunger that had spread to us from the Urals, what plague which condemned us for having a body, but freeze nevertheless the will to be free from the yoke of the czar and war. We emerged modern, daughters of publicity, garçon and flappers without corsets, with dresses that cling to the thin body, elegant, covered in furs and jewels, ignoring the cries and showing off the luxury. We, ex we escaped from the death to the speed of the new machine and entered into the madness of the twenties, of cocaine and jazz, of sex in slang. Around us, the wreckage melted in the night and forget forgetfulness made us remember only the, new, the, the few days left to live. Quickly, quickly, we are going to the exhibition of domestic arts. It's a washing machine, a refrigerator, a gramophone. Ah, not forgetting the eternal singer. We have everything that we want even the vote. The speed increased from the 20s to the 30s, 
the losers must pay. But after all, it wasn't just them we all paid. Above all, we paid. Most of majority that remained of those many absent, the anonymous majority indefinite remaining after death. Peace has Big Brother's name. The reconstruction also, and all the rest from which we lived has its name carved in the history made by you. Fast was the time of the, the treaty, which left only the effectiveness of a promise and a life vengeance. The time of society of all nations, which without trying managed hell to desolate the earth again. The chaos, the depression, called for the arm of the strongest. Here is the era of the beast, 666, inaugurated its entrance in the house of the year 33. And numbers would be his greatest passion. They would mark his place in the tribune of history. We were called again, again, mother of the family, of the home of all the nations. They elevated us in models created to serve the regime. Folks, Kerpa. They demanded from us a healthy, robust, and agile body, a natural, open face, an upright soul and courageous character, character to serve the masses. They serialized her, us, treated us, sterilized us on behalf of the race that was to be pure and to you also to be a man, to be father of a healthy son. Eradicate the bad adjusted. Society doesn't have room for them. Regenerate, not procreate, was the sacrosanct motto. Kristallnacht was the night of all nights, the night which inaugurated the terror of the pogroms, of the unimaginable and indescribable. They opened the camps, the doors of fear, and the impure were concentrated in the same place to facilitate the humanization, to humanity and the stripping of dignity. The state minotaur rose above all of life, of marriage, of the family. It was necessary to take to the end the Rassenkampf. From eugenics to euthanasia was just, just a short step. And there we went without knowing where or why to Ravensbrück. There they stole our name and gave us a number. And that was the beginning of all our torments. They stole everything from us, even our own death, which being anonymous never existed. Thus proving our lost probation, dignity the in existence. Without grave, without home, without cross, without right of resurrection, without tombstone, without death, without death, without life. After the Anschluss war again, the same monster that nobody wanted to resurrect, but no one stopped it, it happening in the conviction of a courage squatted by hypocrisy. Blitzkrieg did not produce the expected results and the time was slow marked by the three merciless fates. We answered to the mobilization for the factories. It was the Reichsführer who called us and our children's hunger that impelled us. This time in an unrestrained revolt that had forgotten the name and was just a number in the Nationalsozialistische Frauenschaft. But for you, the method of cleansing used up until then was too slow and ostentatious. It was necessary to find another solution, to put, a, to put a fast end to the question of the Jews. You had an effective, discreet and silent idea then, as if they were going to a collective shower. They would inhale the little gas and they would not realize and that would be an end to them, you of course would deny everything, the conspiracy of silence. That would be the last largest secret in history of which nobody would have knowledge, least of all the victims. The new gas chambers, let us see. 
With them, we, could, we can put an end to the 3,000 people in two hours. And millions went this, this way in Auschwitz and in other camps and gulags that traced the geography of death beyond reason. Nevertheless, there, were, there we survived by renouncing our identity, capable of the most condemnable means, raising in values that which before had defiled our humanity, competing, betraying, killing, we survived to tell everyone that had not passed through that hell that we have been on the other side of the world and had returned to tell them if we believed in the words that we uttered. You went to the limit to give a name to the end. You created the only child which on birth killed almost the entire population of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. How could, he, how could you give it the name of all futures if with it you would destroy them? After the war, that did not end. Remaining in your thoughts, terrifying our nights, dictating our words, you said yes to Big Brother and the plan began. The reconstruction. But there was one who said no and other joined him. And the world fell in two balanced halves, sustained by terror of total destruction, the nuclear imposed era. Shameless, you raised the wall in the city where the monster hid bunkers. Which ditches, barbed wire, dogs, and watchtowers, we, you imprisoned the liberty and blindfold, blindfolded the eyes of those who wanted to see further. Be, beyond, beyond hate and the Cold War. The hands stretched out to save the children, the husbands, the mothers who were on the other side did not move you, your ego demands an impassable symbol of separation. It was the mirror of many moments when the breath was held awaiting the end. Ha, ah, Cuba, Cuba. Miracles happened one after another. The end postponed at a great cost and the glories, 30s marked their growth with the optimism of the Atomium. The old continent blossomed in a new and anxious age of peace, friendship and cooperation. But first you had to free yourself of a stigma. The condemned of the earth there to free themselves of your yoke and in Bandung, the world which was called the third began a new history in which you, the white man lost the mission which had formerly been yours. And us, where were we entertained with the new camouflage of our ancestral functions, jammed in the consumption of publicity that made us appetizing, desirable, effable, apathetic sex object and decoration reading Marie, Marie Claire and dreaming about being a star in the, Hollywood, in the Hollywood women's movie. Let's not worry, the welfare state will take our thoughts. We'll marry him from now, now that our unemployed husband is good for nothing. We are swallowed by the mass culture made in USA. Leisure and pleasure become the first objectives of our existence and anesthetize anesthetized by fashion and cosmetics. We let ourselves become entangled in your webs, which want us away from the spheres of power. Your fear of us have increased since we proved that we can substitute you. And we were more, although divided and in separate bodies. It is necessary then that we tear off the veils that we let the paranja fall so that everybody can see our face and feel the flow of the, flight, of the fight in our glance. And finally, recognize us in our difference, not as a rival, but as someone similar, because equal we are not. Our strength is centripetal and intrinsic, comes from the inside, from the mark of our immortality. We are ourselves what you are only with us, imminent, what you are only in the realization of yourself. 
you're still there to ask what does a woman want and we're there to answer everything. Not only the political and the libidinous revolution, but in us lives the true essence of creation. Since everything is secret and fear protects it, we quench the fiery words and say only the watered ones. At this time, the clock of the world, the time that is left to us is little for us to be and later create. Therefore, tell us why you continue to feed the monster when everything seemed to be appeased. For what was the secret experience in Algeria? The silence about the Vietnam, the disappeared of Latin America, the death, the death houses. Was this way that you liberated the world, transforming the history that you say you are the protagonist of in an endless list of barbaric and atrocious acts? We went, we went out the street in the mouth of all, all mothers, women, May 68, and we did not raise your fists, but our hands in vulva, since this deafness our gender. Together we manifested for a mixed culture, at two voices, and you didn't seem convinced. But you didn't drop your left wing and progressive mask. Open mouthed, you saw us overthrow the prohibitions and throw into the rubbish bin of freedom the brass, the ribbons, and the false eyelashes. Distrustfully, you watched us confronting the tanks in Prague. And now you also took consciousness that the difference between us is the fundamental difference of humanity. It dictates the beginning of the end of everything. To want to try it, to possess the try it, enjoy the try it was the condition for being accepted in consumer society. The home protection, the speed of the car and the illusion of television drove in lethargy our luck without us realizing that death that gone before life in a pink vegetable. vegetable. Absent, we and you lived in the world of what seems and in spite of those commanding, it just makes you an integral part of its secret, but it doesn't allow you to unmask it. It feeds your narcissistic imaginary with media icons and instills in you a new fear, that of the paranormal, covering its fabricated explanations with a vaguely scientific coloring and appealing to your mythical savage thought. Dasein, we are all here trying to assume once more our body, robbed, tortured, raped, our bodies, ourselves, owners of our wounds. And you too, adhering to the national cause of the good shape, the body accomplished in jogging, ski, tennis, feeling well in skin, in the good American way of life. The body, the new altar of faith prepared some tent soft and firm to the glance of others, is the new public space of what was more ours and yours. It materialized ours and your personality, affirmation, fulfillment. It is the soul and the spirit, and it is also the whole threatened by agents of death, from the outside, the violence, and from the inside, sickness and old age. And there we go, we and you, to execute the last ritual of tempt death, choose the coffin, the clothes according to the dictates of fashion, the in cemetery, and in a total softening, we get inside for the drove in funeral home and the American way of death is lived until the ultimate moment when the cold heavy earth covers us. That which no amount of publicity can make light, can make light. We and you conformed to the illusion of all the values, independence, freedom, autonomy, friendship, love. We and you vulgarized death and the mirrors and the evasion substituted the deception that we demand so much. Life crumbled like dry bread and the secret pursued us until it drove us to the most secret place, suicide. 
challenging everything, subverting everything. We cheat death with the loss, with the last flesh, liver, libertation, libertarian ardor making the moment of its coming. He who destroys life, crumble, destroys history. And now it is not only the pillage of the third world that frightens us, but the ignorance of your limits in setting yourself up as a miracle maker and master of illusions, trying to hide your gains with the veil of a solidarity dictated by your own interests. The competition doesn't let you go and you have to achieve at all costs the best price. It's all a question of economy, of money, of dollar, of petrol dollar, finally of energies that are exhausted like us and you. We ourselves destroyed in exhausting it. You converted them into concrete, into speed, into communication, into computer science, into electronics, into cities and rural deserts, nuclear power and Chernobyl. You converted them into television, the, large, the largest and most rapacious empire of ever. You wanted the world to be a global village. Here you have it for, bre for breakfast, lunch, dinner. Whenever you want to press the on, on via by all the transmission channels, you have the hunger that doesn't take away your appetite, the war that doesn't disturb your sleep, the disease that doesn't worry you, all the frontiers are well guarded, but you have more. You have the village at its, at its end, dying of thirst, of thirst in the advancing desert with black feet from the tides of the rubbish expelled from here, terrified from there, the eyes blinded by polluted air, the lips and the hands cracked from the radiation. These exhausted, and wrecked village transports on her back from house to house, the last days of our civilization. Do you know how to remove the weight which, with which we have burdened? Yes, we know. It is by treating her like a mother, like a living being, respecting her as perfect creation. Unconsciously, you took your revenge on her like on us. You dominated her like you did us, tortured her like us, degraded her like us. And now what will you be without her and without ourselves? Mother, forgive them for they, they know not what they do. Marias wrote to New Portuguese letters and directly you tried to snare us in the trap that you yourself had fallen in. For how can you believe that not all writing is feminine, but just ours? Even when you alone were its messenger, the word was always us. From the beginning, it emanates from the difference which unites us. What fertilized seed? It is the true, it is the true symbol of the cosmovital fusion of the strength and of the shape, the becoming. For it and through it, we conquered letters and the arts too. Deconstructed, demolished, rebuilt, we became creators. But even so, an ancient and profound sadness gives us no truth. And you, how can you wish happiness and think about achieving it when you, our children are enslaved, tortured, prostituted, sold and killed throughout your world? Even so, you want to be a father of and be mother at any price. And it isn't enough for you to transplant organs, put satellites in orbit, change geography, manipulate light, manipulate electronics and informatics, invent, invent quantum theory, clone animals? No, because for you to be a god, you have to create yourself. You knock down the wall and you un unify this old continent, unify this old continent. You open the doors of the house which were had closed and it became transparent like a crystal. 
Then you try to forget all the crystal nights and you celebrate the new treaty, which has to face the crisis and the instability when redrawing the map with many more colors. Next, you went home, turned upon yourself and wanted the continuation of your name, of your blood, of your genes. We opened the door to the most intimate secret of humanity, that which is generated from the fusion of your being with mine. We opened the doors of our love and it is dying. Your secret sterility and mine exposed obsess us, plunge us into mourning. We want a child. We want to seek in the future, the roof of this, the root of this past of immemorial refusal. This past which stigmatizes and shames us, which makes us incapable to the proud and pure eyes of others. We don't care about medical ethics, the fundamental rights of the person, the eugenia and the ontogenic embryology. We want to produce a child and that we can. We choose the sex, the color of the eyes, in fact, all according to our taste and according to our desire. After everything, the theatricality and all the people alone, now we have him in our arms and we should be happy. But, but the dispute and the doubts invade us, corrodes us. Of whom is this child? Of the woman, owner of the womb which generated him? of the father, owner of the semen which fertilized it? What father and mother are we? What family do we constitute? What power is this that we have conquered? We fail, we fall after all into the trap of our obsession and we are dragged by the vertigo of the illusion of being gods. And now we are tired. We will live the seventh day and fortify our spirit of that resistance, which almost gives up the fight and hides itself in the new ways of the old boring messiahs. Borning messiahs who are born as our pain and despair increase. How we suffer with our suicidal fundamentalisms. We, who spill our blood how we die with your racist fanaticism. We are all the excluded and the refugees of the planet. We are the children of the end of the century, of the millennium. And maybe we are also the children of the beginning. Let's open the stack doors to hope, build a colored monument to peace and to freedom, light the brilliant torches in the night to tolerance and to solidarity. Let's go finally together to shout until we break down all resistance. Mother, forgive us. Do not abandon us on the, this day when you need you most. It is in the absolute emptiness that the absolute happening takes place. Therefore, emptiness must be the only relative since death remains virtual, Jean Baudrillard. Just to finish, after, after the end or the beginning, the secret son of the senses will reveal that children are not born in the cabbage, nor the dead disappear among the flowers. And after the orgy of history, under the sign of the apocalypse, the hysteresis of the millennium begins. And we go back to the beginning of the end, the reverse of immortality, not that of the after, but that of the before. And everything is confused in desertion of time of axial, of axial. It is the disappearing, the evanescence. The light is extinguishes from the forms and the senses are fading in nothing. We invert the future and cheat death. Here is my vaulted home matrix of all the liberations and all the inversions of the end to the art of dying. Thank you so much. I don't know if it was too long. <laughs> Probably it was. Uh, no, thank you so much, Anna, for that wonderful reading. And I think I was mesmerized to the core. And 
uh, somebody is asking what's the chapter name it's called seventh day and it's the seventh day of creation of human kind um you know it raises so many questions and it also <laughs> answers them so in some ways the <laughs> chapter is you know is a complete circle in its yes. own um uh, respect so the first question that i would like to ask you anna is how did you conceptualize such a book because i think if i'm not wrong this book is divided into two parts yes you can talk about the book how did you conceptualize it how did you write this book yes so uh, as um, i was for a long time a history teacher and uh, all the time the the, the students were confused about the historical uh, times and eras so i i thought that i could write a book uh, about all the moments all the important moments of the mankind history and so came this uh, vaulted home but uh, at the same time i was building my home my house and when uh, it was a very interesting process because it's not a physical house it's a house where we are going to raise our family our children where we are going to put all our senses all our dreams in it and so this is the more intimate part of the book one the history of mankind is a, is is a um, a public let's say part and this is the private part because it's it's very uh, philosophical too uh, it's a very intimate it's um, uh, i interiorized all the wishes and desires i have for my life and i try to put in this house in this home in the home of senses and feelings yeah and, uh, when you know when we used to uh, study history the main problem was i'm speaking from a student's perspective that we cannot remember the dates yes <laughs> yes that's a big challenge <laughs> yeah you know historians are not calendars they do not yes. have to really uh, know the dates but the essence of history and yes. which is beautifully um, you know there uh, is there in your book so i would like to request all the participants who are sending the questions in the chat uh, i would request them to send the questions in the q and a uh, section of the zoom meet um, if you want to get them answered so moving yes. ahead you know uh, so what uh, this is a question that i am often asked and i'll i'll pose this question to you too <laughs> yeah. it's 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 a cliche question but do we ever learn something from the past you know is there any learning from the history um i don't want to seem pessimist but until now i think we didn't learn so much as we should and we are really repeating the same mistakes again and again the problem is that in other periods of history we could have the luxury <laughs> to repeat the same mistakes but not today because really today the time is running out and we all know um as you know i wrote a, a climate fiction trilogy that uh, the first book is coming out now in us in usa and and uh, united united kingdom and um, we really have a very short time and i i think that we are not doing anything to protect mankind and the planet from extinction what we are doing is so little so little and i'm going to say here one thing that um, i think i i never said before but in these last days i was uh, all the time thinking uh, you ask the rule of the artists what is the rule of the artist in this uh, uh, context of um, mankind evolution or mankind uh, moment and uh, of course the rule of artists and writers in this in my case is really very very important that we have to have that responsibility and assume that responsibility but uh, 
we also have to ask the responsibility of economists because everyone knows, everyone feels, everyone thinks that this economical system is killing us, is turning the planet apart, is creating more and more inequality, more and more poverty. And economy is still be teaching based on market and profit. But these are the two pillars of our destruction. And I don't see no one saying this. Maybe it is. Uh, ah, very difficult, true to face, because uh, even now with this pandemic, what have we learned? We should be together, united, for that all the world gets the, the vaccination and try to, to uh, uh, kill this, this virus that's killing us. But even so, economics speaks louder than the rest. Here in Portugal, we, we were uh, vacillating between uh, uh, the shutdown because it was very bad for economy and seeing the people dying with pandemic. So if a pandemic doesn't show us the way, the path we have to follow, I only can ask what can do this? Definitely, and uh, I think this is something that we must understand, you know, uh, because of the greed and everything that you mentioned in your book very clearly. We are leading nowhere but to the end of humanity, as you pointed out, which is a great danger that we are not, uh, you know, concerning ourselves now and we are just running behind quote unquote development. But, uh, you know, the, the, the problem with development is the term how we define development. We do not define development as something substantial, you know, sustainable that could last longer. It is their short term goals. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, uh, we could, I'll go to your other books and uh, on Casador de Muros, you have taken the example of how the wall, wall the, uh, how you have taken the example of Berlin Wall, if I'm not wrong, yeah. you know, a journalist journey that begins with the fall of the Berlin Wall and ends yes. in the fables of Brazil. Yes. And this book also deals a lot with the society and how where we are leading, how what are the dangers that we have to face. So, what is the role of literature uh, for society, according to you? Um, it's a, a huge role because we have in our hands the power to to denounce, to um, in a way to uncover what is happening to the world. And the words are so, so strong. Just a simple word, as you saw in the chasing walls in Casado de Murge, brought, brought down the Berlin Wall, just a word. So we know how important words are. And so for me, it's a question, it's a, 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 an ethical question. Um, for me as a writer, to participate in this uh, um, world fight for survival, world fight for equality, world fight for those, all those who are in pain, who are suffering, who are being killed by wars, by hunger, by persecution. How could I, as a writer, living in this moment, not write about these so important issues, so dramatic issues? 
how could I as a writer see the destroying the destruction of all the beauties of this planet and being silent that that, that would really never and sometimes and really, this is not a question for me. Uh, the reality demands that I, as a writer, writes about it. Not only, of course, about all the disgraces and catastrophes, but also about the beauty we are losing, we are destroying. Because it's, it's very important for me that those who read my books don't feel all this weight on the on the shoulders and think oh we are in a in a in a in a this is the end no no this is not the end we have all the solutions in our hands but we have to grab them so we we cannot be indifferent or passive we have to be active we have to do and of course we have a, a saying in portuguese that is uh, like this, some something like this. Words, do we take us, take them? Yes, of course. We uh, words are very important, but not only words. We have to do also. And uh, in my case, I try to do what speaking in these festivals, spreading my message, uh, trying to to uh, <laughs> trying to seduce all my readers to this fight, to this struggle, because only, and this is very, very important, on, only the contribution of us all as citizens, we achieve something. Only with our voice united, our actions united, we can achieve something. This is my hope, and I really hope that we will be able to do it. And uh, all the historical events happened with mass movements and everything, especially the Berlin Wall that you mentioned, and, and all the great uh, historical, uh, you know, moments. Uh, the book that we were somebody asking about the book's name. It's called Chased Walls, and it's it's available on Amazon. I have hope yes uh, and so uh, as you mentioned about action you know there are talks going on many lectures discussions on climate change but in reality we are seeing no actions on ground you nothing. know we are we are torturing the planet again and again and there's nothing but political promises and everything you are coming with a trilogy. It's a fiction trilogy on climate change. As yes. you mentioned, the first book is coming out. Would you like to tell our readers in detail about three, all the three books in the trilogy? So the first one is called The Director and is coming soon in one, two weeks will be available in all uh, the online platforms, Amazon, Barnes and & and Nobles and so on. And um, The Director, uh, I began to write it not thinking about a trilogy, but I love the sea. The sea is really my nature. And uh, all my problems go away when I'm by the sea. And we are destroying the sea, the oceans. We are destroying the beginning of life, the matrix of life. And so I started to, to, to write about uh, uh, the oceans and all the crimes we are committing against them. And, uh, but this, the director is not only, it came out in 2017 in Brazil first and then in Portugal in 2018. And the director is at, in, in, in general, all the people who are directing this planet. So all the people who have in their hands directly the responsibilities of directing all other lives. So in this director of my book is a miserable one. Is a very, is, is, is really a, a very, very bad person. Uh, and then 
the, the story goes on, of course, passing through the genocide of the Armenians, because it's very, very important for me to speak about this. This is the, the, the silenced history, the secret history uh, that still is uncovered and unassumed. And uh, then, of course, at the time, it was the major problem of the Syrian refugees. So, and of course, I, I also uh, talk about them. And then, but the book goes on speaking about the corals and the reefs and so on and so on and so on. But it ends with a very strong message of hope because the director knew someone who changed him. It means that the message I want to pass with this book is that we still have time to change and to follow the right path. But we shouldn't listen very much to the directors that are, how can I say, that are, that are serving the great master that is the capital, the great capital, the money. I think that will be an interesting take on climate change, you know, because we are talking about the players who are yes. going to have a have an impact on yes. the whole situation. And I yes, think I would second, really love to read some. Yes, the, yeah. sorry, the second book, book is called Ice and is happening in the Arctic. And it's, of course, everyone understands why it's happening in the Arctic. And the, the, the last one that came out now in Portugal is called Deserts because the, we are suffering the desertification. So, and that is a, a huge problem. And is also talking about all people, all, all human beings that are deprived of their country because the country dried up. and they can't survive there. So they are refugees. They are climate refugees. Yes. And I think we look forward to the, the series, the book series, which I think is quite interesting. And, uh, and I'll I ask you one last. Sorry. I think it's yes. the world's only climate fiction trilogy. It's called Our Mother. Yes. Yes, and our mother, congratulations. Our mother because it's it's most more than comprehensible. Yes, and uh, I think it's all almost time. So I'll ask you one last question, mm -hmm. and it, and we'll deal with this question again in the second panel that we have at six. Yes. But if you can briefly answer this, and in in detail, you can answer in that session. What do you think about translations? You know, because the, the thing that you read is a translated version of the book in English. So when you translate from the, the first language to the translated language, are there things that are lost in translation that you think, uh, you know, how, how do you think about translations basically? Uh, in this book, I made the first translation and then it was edited and corrected and so on. But it, it was, all the process was done closed to me. So I, I was uh, present in all steps of the way. But of course, as a translator, uh, there is, of course, uh, feelings. Uh, <laughs> memories. Even we can say um, touches that are lost in the translation. Uh, and I know in this book, all the verbs that are not really in English, what I said in Portuguese, but that is um, unavoidable, I think. It's uh, probably, uh, I want, I always wonder how Fernando Pessoa, our greatest uh, poet, was translated in 30, I think 36 languages. 
because he's really very, very difficult. And his poetry, poetry for me is still more difficult to translate as uh, uh, novels. And uh, really, uh, I'm almost sure that something is lost on the way of translation, but it's also the only way to spread the word because otherwise I couldn't be here talking with you and all the audience and speaking about my book and reading my book in English if it was not translated. It's, uh, it must be, it must be. Yes, and, and we'll deal with this question in detail in our second panel. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, and there are questions from the audience that I would like to take now. This is from yes. Kunal. Yeah. He says, Anna, the reading was beautiful. Why did you choose to read the last chapter of the book? Uh, because the last chapter, uh, the book is, uh, is um, talking about all the moments from prehistory until 20th century. And um, uh, so the, the, the context, but the last chapter is the chapter where I try to synthesize the history of mankind. So the six chapters before. So in this, and this also kind of manifest, a feminist, let's say manifest. And why feminist? Because this, uh, the history of mankind is told by a woman. So if you, if you read, you, you see immediately. And all the times, in all moments is the same woman. So it's the same woman, of course, this is fiction, from the prehistory until the 20th century. And this woman finds out that she must really do a manifest. And this seven day is a manifest. Yes, and the narrative is, uh, <laughs> through the feminist style, the narrative is more interesting, I think, because, you know, for a change, we get to read a feminist pers perspective on history. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> It is interesting. The second question is from Bharati. Her question is, what was your inspiration to write this book, Vaulted Home? What was my experience by writing this book? Inspiration. Inspiration. Uh, inspiration. As I told you, the first, the really first inspiration was uh, really to help my students uh, to, to comprehend the evolution of mankind. So, and then uh, I thought that I made, made the same mistakes as them as in the time I was a student. So I thought, and of course, uh, it's, all my books have an historical basis because uh, it's, it's, my, it's my background. No? And history is really for me, uh, <laughs> probably the most important uh, discipline uh, for now to, for, for us to live. for us to understand, of course, the past, and mainly for us to build our future. And uh, uh, yes, the inspiration was history, was everything. And the, the, the house, uh, the other part, so this is uh, one part, is the, 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 the part of the, 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 the mankind history. The other one is my history. It's the history of me as, uh, an individual. So, and the, the building, the, the construction of the house is really a kind of uh, metaphor. Uh, of course, I built the house, the house where I am now today, but it's also a metaphor uh, because it has a lot of, um, uh, it has a lot of, uh, how can I say, philosophical approaches and uh, uh, it is very uh, it's difficult to speak about what what we write but it's um, it's a very emotional part it's a part where I go deep in myself and I put very difficult questions to myself. And I give also very painful answers to myself. <laughs> yes. 
thank you so much for that interesting answer actually and anna i must tell you this was such a treat and delight to listen to you and to read uh, your book and you know i think um, for for us history students and for philosophy students this book is a must read because the kind of perspective that you get after reading is really something that is unique and i i didn't i did not read anything like this uh, before Thank and you. thank you thank so you. much for the experience the, the, the new experience that you gave all of us uh, and so i would really like to thank belong for yeah. inviting anna and for asking me to moderate this session with her <laughs> and <laughs> ask these questions yeah. uh, you know these amazing questions and for her amazing responses uh, i think we are almost done with the session and i would like to request uh, yeah uh, she is here uh, thank you so much Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Ishan. Thank you, Anna. Thank you for thank doing you, this. Thank you, Vasya. And you can stay back and watch the next session if you want uh, on yes, uh, yes. video off. Um, I'd like to let the audience know that you can actually meet Ishan and Anna again in exactly uh, one hour, five minutes on track yes. two. And Anna and Ishan will both be speaking with Archal Malhotra, who is the author of Remnants of Separation. Uh, Archal writes about partition and material memory, and she is an oral historian. Um, Um, Achal, Anna, and Ishan will be speaking about talking diversity in history and writing diversity in history, and a little bit also about uh, translation. I was on their mm-hmm. drive-in call earlier, and it will be uh, what I am sure a very, very interesting uh, session. Uh, at the same time, on track one is the make your own dictionary. Um, uh, Make your own dictionary audience interaction session with the Austrian author Lydia. That's also at 6 p.m. on track one. Um, thank you so much, Ishan and Anna, and thank I would like to, I'd like to thank the um, uh, Camus Portuguese Institute uh, for inviting Anna, and um, we look forward to meeting you both at 6 p.m. today. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Thank you. And bye. 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 See you later. Wonderful beginning of this uh, of this festival.